A quick new idea, daily, from the world's greatest TEDx talks. I'm your host, Atosa Leone, and this is TEDx Shorts. Exactly when and where did life on Earth begin? In today's episode, astrobiologist Tara Jokic argues that the over 3 billion year voyage of life on Earth is written in the rocks. From life's first steps to a human's first breath, the deep geological past alludes to the origins, evolution, and future of life on this planet we call home. The Earth is 4.6 billion years old, but a human lifetime often lasts for less than 100 years. So why care about the history of our planet when the distant past seems so inconsequential to everyday life? We know Earth is unique for having plate tectonics, liquid water on its surface, and an oxygen-rich atmosphere. But this has not always been the case. And we know this because ancient rocks have recorded the pivotal moments in Earth's planetary evolution. And one of the best places to observe those ancient rocks is in the Pilbara of Western Australia. The rocks here are 3.5 billion years old, and they contain some of the oldest evidence for life on the planet. We know from the fossil record, bacteria, life, had grabbed a strong foothold by about 3.5 to 4 billion years ago. But rocks older than this have been either destroyed or highly deformed through plate tectonics. So what remains a missing piece of the puzzle is exactly when and how life on Earth began. In 1871, in a letter to his friend Joseph Hooker, Charles Darwin suggested What if life started in some warm little pond with all sorts of chemicals still ready to undergo more complex changes? Well, we know of warm little ponds, we call them hot springs. In these environments, you have hot water dissolving minerals from the underlying rocks. This solution mixes with organic compounds and results in a kind of chemical factory, which researchers have shown can manufacture simple cellular structures that are the first steps toward life. But after Darwin's letter, deep-sea hydrothermal vents, or hot vents, were discovered in the ocean. And these are also chemical factories. And since the discovery of these deep-sea vents, the favored scenario for an origin of life has been in the ocean. And this is for good reason. Deep-sea vents are well known in the ancient rock record. And it's thought that the early Earth had a global ocean and very little land surface. So the probability that deep-sea vents were abundant on the very early Earth fits well with an origin of life in the ocean. Of course, it's still debatable how life began on Earth, and it probably always will be. But it is clear that it's flourished, it has diversified, and it has become ever more complex. Eventually, it reached the age of the human, a species that has begun to question its own existence and the existence of life elsewhere. Is there a cosmic community waiting to connect with us? Or are we all there is? A clue to this puzzle, again, comes from the ancient rock record. At about 2.5 billion years ago, there is evidence that bacteria have begun to produce oxygen, kind of like plants do today. Geologists refer to the period that followed as the Great Oxidation Event. The arrival of free oxygen allowed two major changes to occur on our planet. First, it allowed complex life to evolve. You see, life needs oxygen to get big and complex. And it produced the ozone layer, which protects modern life from the harmful effects of the sun's UVB radiation. So in an ironic twist, microbial life made way for complex life and in essence relinquished its three billion year reign over the planet. Today, we humans dig up fossilized complex life and burn it for fuel. 
This practice pumps vast amounts of carbon dioxide into the atmosphere. And like our microbial predecessors, we have begun to make substantial changes to our planet. And the effects of those are encompassed by global warming. Unfortunately, the ironic twist here could see the demise of humanity. And so maybe the reason we aren't connecting with life elsewhere, intelligent life elsewhere, is that once it evolves, it extinguishes itself quickly. If the rocks could talk, I suspect they might say this. Life on Earth is precious. It is the product of four or so billion years of a delicate and complex co-evolution between life and Earth, of which humans only represent the very last speck of time. You can use this information as a guide or a forecast, or an explanation as to why it seems so lonely in this part of the galaxy. But use it to gain some perspective about the legacy that you want to leave behind on the planet that you call home. The TEDx talk you just listened to was recorded at a TEDx event in Sydney, Australia. All TEDx events are independently organized by volunteers who believe in TED's mission of ideas worth spreading. Special thanks to the organizing team at TEDx Sydney. Scientific ideas are always subject to change as researchers learn more. For more details and context on this talk, check out the footnotes on TED.com. I'm Atosa Leone. Thanks for listening and see you tomorrow.